Good morning, Transformers. Today is Wednesday. I don't know when you're watching us from, but today is Wednesday as we delve further into honor. And uh, I'm still teacher Anne Nyambura. Uh, we've been looking at honor from Monday. We looked at how to honor God and then how to honor our parents. And today we're going to look at how to honor uh, those in spiritual authority. And there's something about this week's word it's that it's very, very simple. And the thing about uh, our simplicity in the things of God is sometimes we expect God to expose to us to the complex things, uh, the deep things, but the simple things we haven't obeyed, the simple things we haven't really put them into practice. So this week, uh, we're going back to the basics, the basics of honor, honoring God, honoring our, uh, our parents. And today we're going to look at honoring those in spiritual authority. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word. You've been teaching us about honor and we are learning that it is very important to you that we honor you in the way that we conduct ourselves, in the way that we um, give to you, Jehovah Lord, even in the way that we serve you, Jehovah. And you also taught us how to honor our parents. And today as we look at how to honor those in spiritual authority, we want to ask that you would speak to us in that language that we would be able to understand. We thank you for this opportunity to hear your word. We know that your word doesn't go forth in vain. So may it accomplish that which you've set it forth to accomplish in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, as we look at honoring those in spiritual authorities, I want us to look at the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 12 to 13. It says, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, those who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work, live in peace with each other other that is what the bible tells us that he expects us to uh, acknowledge those who work hard um uh, in the work of the lord the ones who take care of our spiritual um beings uh, our pastors our leaders in you know the spiritual uh, authority those are the people that god is telling us about and he's telling us to honor them to treat them with respect and trust me they do uh, work hard in the book of exodus as we are looking at um, how God told Aaron and his sons to be dressed. There's a, 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 there's a way that he put um, the design for Aaron that he should be wearing um, something in front that had 12 stones on his chest. And those 12 stones had uh, the names of the children of uh, the tribes of the children of Israel on, on them. And he also had them put on his shoulders, you know, the, the, the same 12 stones. And these 12 stones represented the children of Israel. And as he would go forth to minister, he would go forth with the children of Israel in front. And on, in front is where your heart is. And he'd go forth uh, with the children of Israel on his shoulders. And basically that means he'd be carrying them on his shoulders. The heavy, the strongest part of his body would be carrying the children of Israel. And that's what the, 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 your pastors, that's what your spiritual authority uh, do uh, over, the, over your life. Sometimes they carry your burdens physically carry your burdens. When you're going through tough times, you will, you will reach out to your pastor. Sometimes you're going through um, tough times um, and you need help. You will reach out to their, your pastor. They'll be able to help you. And they carry you also in your heart, in their hearts. Eh? They, when you have trouble, they think about you. They pray over you. They have mercy on you. You know, and if they didn't carry you over their hearts, they wouldn't even be able to carry you on their shoulders because sometimes it's so hard. So if they don't really care for you, they'd be able to put down your burdens you know, and, and just let you be. But that's the work of our pastors and those in spiritual authority. But unfortunately, we've not been able to honor those people that God has put um, uh, for us to take, care, to take care of us as our shepherds. We do not honor them. And we even sometimes honor those guys who are our you know, online preachers more than the pastors that God has given us in our, in, in our churches. You know, you, you hear that a certain preacher who you love very much, who you watch online is in town and you will not even sleep that night. You will be camped, you know, in a certain stadium waiting for that man of God to come. And when your pastor, the one who dedicated your children, the one who uh, wed you in church, the one who you call when your mother is sick, ask you to come, ask you to come maybe um, to church. There is, there is a prayer meeting in the evening. Ask you to come to church because you need to, you know, um, go visit someone who's not feeling well. You will not obey them. 
yeah and that's the man of god or the woman of god that he has given unto you you're dishonoring that man of god um I, I want us to read the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17, the message Bible. Be responsive to your pastoral leaders. Listen to their counsel. They are alert to the conditions of your lives and work under the strict supervision of God. Contribute to the joy of the leadership, not their drudgery. Why would you want to make things harder for them? That is what the Bible is asking us. Why are we making hard things hard for our pastors? Why do we on dishonor them? Why do we disrespect them? Why do we gossip them? Why, when we have seen their nakedness, do we go out there and slander them? Because that is what we are doing. We are making the work of the men of God hard, you know. Um, and unfortunately, that comes with consequences. Whether we like it or not, it comes with consequences. Um, I'll share a story about um, a, a lady friend of mine. And I had a dream that she, um, we were in a, in, a, in a sort of like a dorm. Yeah, it had beds, there were double-decker beds, and where I was sleeping, it was fine, but where she was sleeping, the roof had been taken, um, out, out, you know, like, had been taken out, so it was raining and her bed was soaked wet. And I remember when I woke up, I first um, held back and I, I wasn't able to say anything, but finally, after I gathered courage and I con consulted God, I called and I asked her, um, my friend, have you, have you, you know, um, disagreed with any man of God? Um, is there any way that you could have um, dishonored a man of God? Have you slandered them or has anything happened that is negative between you and a man of God? And they quickly confessed. They told me, yes, uh, there is one, this and this happened. Um, and let me tell you the truth, it was a man of God's fault. But as long as that man of God was hurt by the way she reacted, there was a covering that had been removed from her life and rain was pouring through her life. Maybe your life is like that friend of mine and, and there is rain going through the roof of your house. The only thing you need to do is to repent. Come back to this man of God. Tell them, forgive me. I know I said, forgive me. I know I did, forgive me. But you need that cover back. So I pray that God will give us the wisdom to not be proud. I know sometimes the men of God do not come in the color or in the shape or in the age that we expect them to. But God expects us to honor them. It's good to have that preacher that is online, but the man of God who you've been given in the house, uh, that's the one that God wants you to honor, to treat with respect and not to slander or gossip. The Bible also expects to obey them. There's a story in the book of 2 Kings uh, verse 5, 15 to 27 about Naaman. When he had been healed and um, he asked Elisha to accept a gift and Elisha said no. But Elisha had a servant, he was called Gehazi. And Gehazi was like, hey, yo, why are you refusing to take this gift? You know, we could do so much with it. And so he decided, I'm going back and I'm going to ask Naman for that gift. So he went and asked Naman. He, he concocted a story about how there were uh, two young men from the house of prophets who had come and they needed something. And so Naman gave him a gift. And then um, Gehazi went and hid those gifts for himself. And when he went to Elijah, and Elijah asked him, where have you come from? And that uh, guy lied. And Elijah knew, you know, by um, the Spirit of God, Elijah knew, and he cast him. He told him, that leprosy that was with Naaman, may it be unto you too. Uh, and so I pray that we would be able to obey the man and the women of God that God has put um, in authority over us. I know sometimes um, we get used to them, sometimes we hang around them enough times and we start to dishonor them. We hang around them enough times and we see their nakedness and we can't be able to honor them because of that. Sometimes we tend to compare them with even those other pastors of the left and of the right and we stop honoring the ones that God has anointed uh, in our midst. But let me tell you something, um, that which you do not honor, the anointing that you do not honor cannot be a blessing unto you. So if you want to be blessed by the anointing of the men of God in your church, may you begin to honor them. So now, does the man um, of God receive honor in your church? And I want, I want us to re remember the story of Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 13, 54 to 58. And as uh, he was coming into his hometown, he was speaking in the synagogue. And as he was speaking, those guys were like, this guy is the son of the carpenter. Eh? We know the brothers asking, James and Jehu. We even know their sisters. Basically, they know all his 
uh, his family background, how he grew up. They knew his, his family's dad, you know, they knew everything about him. So um, because of that, even when he tried to speak to them, the Bible says they took offense at him. They turned up their noses and they ignored him. Sometimes the men of God and the women of God are people we've grown up with. We know their history. We know their weaknesses. <laughs> we know um, the, the route they've passed through. We know everything about them. And so we tend to despise them. So we cannot be able to receive uh, of their blessings. And maybe that's our message for us, for us this morning. Would you begin to honor the man of God? As long as God has put him in that position of authority, he is there for you to honor. It's not easy. It's going to demand of you. It's going to, to have you forget those things that you know about them and focus on the God that anointed them. And may the Lord help you and give you the grace to do that. And if you have uh, at one point... Um, Maybe dishonored a man of God, maybe uh, or a woman of God. This is your opportunity to just say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, we recognize the things we have said about the men of God in our lives. We've slandered them, we've gossiped them, we've disobeyed them, we've done wrong in your sight. And God, we ask that you would forgive us. May you help us that we would be like you. May you help us to obey your will, O oh God. We pray that we would be able to be recipients of the anointing of the men of God in our lives. We thank you for these men of God and women of God. They are shepherds that you've anointed uh, for us season like this. And we thank you for them. God, we pray that you would help us to live peaceably with them. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen.